Hello, in this video, I'm gonna be looking at the second half of lesson 2.1 on properties of parallel lines. In the previous video, we talked about the different types of angle pairs that are formed when two lines are intersected by a transversal. And then we ended that lesson by talking about some different postulates and theorems related to two parallel lines being cut by a transversal. In today's lesson, we're going to be using these properties to solve problems involving the measures of angle pairs when we have two parallel lines that are cut by a transversal. So let's start off by reviewing the postulates and theorems we discussed at the end of day one. First, we have the corresponding angles postulate, which tells us if a transversal intersects two parallel lines, then the corresponding angles are congruent. Remember that these postulates and theorems here only apply if the two lines are parallel. So you either need to be told they're parallel or you need to be given some marking like this that indicates the lines are parallel. Next, we have the alternate interior angle postulate, which tells us that if a transversal intersects two parallel lines, then alternate interior angles are congruent. The alternate exterior angles postulate tells us if a transversal intersects two parallel lines, then the alternate exterior angles are congruent. So these first three angle pairs are all congruent, provided that the two lines being intersected by the transversal are parallel. The same side interior and same side exterior angles have a different relationship. If a transversal intersects two parallel lines, then the same side interior angles are supplementary, which means they add to 180. Same side exteriors have the same relationship. If a transversal intersects two parallel lines, then the same side exterior angles are supplementary, which means together their measures add to 180 degrees. And then the last theorem here should be review from chapter zero. If a transversal intersects two parallel lines, then vertical angles are congruent. And technically, vertical angles are always congruent, so you really don't even need all three of these lines. When we look at vertical angles, we just need one line and another line that intersect, and that gives us two pairs of vertical angles. So now that we've reviewed these important postulates and theorems, we're ready to solve some problems that involve using these relationships. In example two, we wanna determine the relationship between the labeled angles in each diagram and the indicated angle measure. Assume the lines are parallel. So it tells us in the directions that the lines are parallel, therefore we can apply those postulates and theorems that we just discussed. The first thing we need to do is figure out which type of angle pair is illustrated in the diagram. Recall that the interior angles are in between the two lines, so the interior angles would be inside here, and the exterior angles are outside the two lines. So you'll notice that the angle marked with the 77 and the angle marked with the X are both exterior angles. Well, those exterior angles are on the same side of the transversal. My transversal is that diagonal line that's intersecting the two parallel lines. I'm also going to mark my two lines as parallel here. And if we look at these two angles here, we can see again that they are same side exterior. They're exterior because they're outside the two lines and they're same side because they're both to the um, lower half of the transversal. So we have same side exterior angles. And if you go back to your theorems and postulates, you'll find by the same side exterior angles theorem that same side exterior angles are supplementary. So in order to solve for x, we need to use that relationship that together the two angles add to 180 degrees. So we could set up a basic equation here, or we could just take 180 minus 77, right? Because I know together the x plus the 77, that's the angle pair, has to add to 180. And if we subtract 77 on both sides, we arrive at x equals 103. And you could also just take your calculator, do 180 minus 77 without writing an equation, and you would also arrive at your answer of x equal 103.
Problem B gives us another pair of labeled angles, and again, we are assuming that the two lines are parallel. Now, notice that these two angles are just across from each other. They're on opposite sides of two intersecting lines. I really don't even need the second of the two parallel lines. I'm just looking at these two. And we know that these two angles are a pair of vertical angles. So that's our angle relationship. And we know that vertical angles are congruent. So given they're congruent, that just means they have the exact same measure. So that means X must also be 120 degrees. In problem C, notice that the two angles are both to the right of the transversal and they're both below the parallel lines. They're essentially in the same spot. We have the 68 degree angle here on the right of the transversal and below the top parallel line. And we have angle X that's to the right of the transversal and below the bottom parallel line. So that makes these corresponding angles. And if you go back to the corresponding angles postulate, we know that if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, corresponding angles are congruent. So that means, once again, that they have the same measure. So that must mean X is also 68 degrees. In example three now, we're going to try to find multiple different angle measures using the relationship. Technically, if I give you one angle measure, you should be able to use the angle relationships to come up with all of the other angle measures. And there's a lot of different ways that you can approach this question. So the way I walk through it here in this video isn't the only way I could arrive at these answers. First, notice that the labeled angle, angle five, is X. Well, let me just start by finding some angles that are congruent to X. If I look here, I notice that angle seven is a vertical angle with angle X. So angle seven must be the same as angle X because it's vertical with angle five. So I'm gonna put an X there in my diagram. Next, I'm going to observe that X and angle one are corresponding. So angle one must be X as well because it's corresponding, I'm gonna abbreviate that a little bit, with angle five. Well, next we have the measure of angle three. And you can see here that angle three, there's a couple ways I could get that. It's either vertical with angle one, so it's the same as angle one, or if I go back to angle five, my given angle, notice that the X and the three are a pair of alternate interior angles. Either way, that makes three equal to X. I'm going to label it here that it's alternate interior with angle five. You could also use the fact that it's vertical with angle one. So now we have four out of the eight angles, and to find the remaining pairs, there's a couple different ways we could do that. Uh, number one, we can use some of the other relationships, or number two, we know that two angles that form a line always equal 180 degrees. So for example, if I know angle one is X, I know that angle two is 180 minus x because together angle one and angle two form a straight line and a straight line is 180 degrees. So you could definitely use those relationships or if you wanted to, you can notice that angle two and x are same side interior angles. Either way that makes it supplementary with angle x. So 180 minus x is the measure of angle two. And I'm going to just explain here that it is same side interior with angle five. Okay, you could also do that. And then by that same idea, we could find all of the other angle measures. Angle four is going to also be 180 minus x because it's vertical with angle two. 
angle six, if I look at my diagram here, angle six, I could see that together six and x are forming a line. So it's 180 minus x or angle six and angle two are corresponding. So a lot of different ways I could approach that. Um, but either way, we get x to be 180, or excuse me, 6 to be 180 minus x. And by the same idea, we know that angle 8 is also 180 minus x. So a pattern that you'll notice when we have two parallel lines being intersected by a transversal, four of the angles are going to have one measurement. In this case, angle 1, angle 3, angle 5, and angle 7 all had a measure of x, and the other four angles are going to be supplementary with those angles, so 180 minus whatever these measures are. So for the try now here, this time instead of a general x, we're actually going to find the measures of the different angles. And there's so many different ways you could approach this question. For example, if I start at angle 1, notice that together, Angle 1 and 118 form a straight line. And we know a straight line is always 180 degrees. So I could start off by saying, well, 180 minus 118 is equal to 62. So that makes angle 1 62 degrees. And it helps if you mark the angles in the diagram as you find them. Now, angle 2 is vertical with angle 1. So angle 2 here would be 118 degrees. And now I'm going to skip around a little bit. I know that angle 6 has to be the exact same as angle 1 because it's vertical with angle 1. So angle 6 will also be 62 degrees. So I'm going to again mark that in my diagram, 62 degrees. And then if we move to the second set of intersecting lines, I'm going to start with the fact that angle 7 must be 118. Notice that angle 7 is corresponding with the 118 degree angle that we're given. Corresponding angles are congruent, so angle 7 would be 118. Please pause the video now and see if you can find the measure of the remaining three angles on your own. Please pause your video. Okay, here are your solutions to those last three angles. Angle 3 is 62 degrees. You could find that multiple different ways. Um, you could use the fact that it is alternate interior with angle 6 that's 62 degrees, or that it forms a linear pair or a straight line with angle 7. And then we have angle 4 is 118, and angle 8 is 62 degrees. For our last type of example, we are going to state the relationship between the indicated angle pair and then find the value of x. Notice that the two lines are marked as parallel by these red arrows, so we can use all of the relationships that we discussed at the beginning of this lesson video. You'll notice that the 18x and the 17x plus 5 are both interior angles because they're in between the two parallel lines. They're also on opposite sides of the transversal, which makes these alternate interior angles. And we know that alternate interior angles are congruent to each other. That's the relationship by the alternate interior angles postulate. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then alternate interior angles are congruent. So given that these two angles are congruent, we know that they should have the same measure. So we can just take those two expressions, 18x and 17x plus 5, and set them equal to each other. And now we just need to do the algebra in order to find the answer. Now, part of your homework when you do your Schoology assignment is going to be just to pick the equation. Um, so that would be the equation I would pick, 18x equals 17x plus 5. And now I'm going to rewrite that and actually solve the equation in the space below that. So I have 18x equals 17x plus 5. We can draw our line down the middle and notice that we have an x on both sides. So I'm going to start by moving all the x's to one side. 
We can get rid of the 17x on the right side by subtracting 17x on both sides. And 18 minus 17 is 1, and 1x is the same as x. So here I have x equal, that cancels, so x equal 5. So our final answer for the equation is x equal 5. In this next example, notice that the two angles marked are both interior angles, again, but this time they're on the same side of the transversal. So that makes these same side interior angles. Now be careful on this problem. Same side interior angles are not congruent. Same side interior angles are supplementary, which means they have to add to 180 degrees. So for our equation, we're not setting them equal to each other like we did in the previous problem. Now, since the relationship is supplementary, we need to take the expressions for the two angles and add them together and total it up to 180. So I have 12x plus 23x plus 5 equals 180 degrees. And that's our equation. Now, in the space below, let's go ahead and actually solve that equation. On the left side, notice that we have two like terms. The 12x and the 23x can be combined together. 12 plus 23 is 35. So we have 35x plus 5 equals 180. Now let's move that plus 5 to the other side by subtracting 5 on each side. This will cancel over here and leave us with 35x equals 175. To finish up the question, we just need to divide each side by 35. And if we take 175 divided by 35, that is 5. So my answer here would be x equal 5. Here's a try now for you to try on your own. Begin by stating the angle relationship and then looking at your theorems and postulates to determine whether you should set them equal to each other or add them together and total them to 180. The equation will be based upon what type of angle relationship you have. Once you've written your equation, then go ahead and solve your equation and find the value of x. Please pause this video now and give this problem a try on your own. Okay, here is your solution. The angle relationship is corresponding angles, and we know that corresponding angles are congruent. So for the equation, we set 23x minus 5 equal to 21x plus 5, and then we do the algebra. Ironically, the answer here is also x equal 5. This concludes lesson 2.1, day 2. Thanks for watching, and good luck as you practice some problems on your own. Bye.